You ever woken up to find your dishwasher not dry or maybe even not clean? What's up warriors? I'm JR. Welcome back to Warrior House DIY. In this video, I'm going to show you how to inspect and repair your dishwasher when it's not drying, possibly not cleaning, saving you hundreds of dollars because you don't necessarily need to replace this. So let's jump into it. Warrior House DIY, empowering you with skills for life. Make sure to like this video, check out our helpful links in the description below, and don't forget to subscribe. The first thing we're going to want to do is inspect the dishwasher itself. All dishwashers are pretty much the same, but a little bit different, right? So we're just going to go through and push our buttons, make sure that, you know, heavy cycle, normal cycle, one hour wash all works. We can see that the lights light up for heat dry and for high temperature wash and those kinds of things. So we know that it's not a circuit board problem necessarily, not just yet, right? We're also going to want to inspect the rinse aid. Believe it or not, in some of the more modern units, if this is not full, the circuit board is going to tell the unit not to heat during the drying cycle. So you're going to want to make sure it's full. You can find at any of your local stores your rinse aid of choice. There's a lot of different products out there that do help with drying as well as draining, kind of helping to keep the whole unit clean. So in our case, our rinse aid is good. Now we're going to go and inspect the, the obvious here, right? And this is going to be taking out the rack simply inspecting the back of this basin here and seeing what's going on now our float switch which activates when the water level is a high enough point and it's going to drain out is seems to be moving just fine nothing's stuck there's no debris underneath there while you're in here I always recommend taking out your filter and giving it a good clean inspecting the float switch and when it comes to this you want to make sure that it moves up and down freely in fact when you pick it up and you let it go You'll notice there's a little bit of bounce in it. You can even hear the click. Then you know that the switch is activating properly. I have a little bit of rust staining here. In fact, a, a mounting screw had fallen down. It was holding the float switch up a little bit. I thought maybe that was the culprit. Turns out that the float switch is working properly in this unit. The tank is draining properly. If you have water that's spilling out, this is not, this basin is not draining. That would be an indicator that your float switch is not working properly. I'll leave a link down below for the proper float switch for this unit and uh, it's an amazon link so for any of the parts that you find on amazon if you just click on the link in the description below type in your model number which you can find on the inside panel there's a sticker enter your model number and you can make sure that it's the right part and if not your part will show up on amazon and then we're going to go ahead and inspect the rest of the components in the back of here the heat coil is the one thing that we're looking at and oh look at that our heat coil is visibly broken. It is snapped in half. So we know that this is the culprit as it's going to most likely be. Now here's the interesting fact for you. It might not be cracked in half and still not functioning. So with a visual inspection, we can see if there's any nicks or dents or maybe something fell down and melted on there. I know that that happened to us many years ago. We had a baby bottles that fell apart. <laughs> Piece of baby bottle fell down and melted on it. And, and that was the end of that heat coil and it shorted it out. And so in this case, ours is cracked in half. It's a pretty easy fix. We know that we need to replace it. This is a simple part to find. You can take the QR code or the barcode on the inside of your door panel and scan that or just Google that online. And a lot of times Amazon is going to be the, the go-to source for the aftermarket parts for this. If your unit is under warranty, Turn this video off and call your warranty repair person and use that as long as you can. No, in all seriousness, don't turn it off because eventually it'll break and it'll be out of warranty like ours is here. So we're going to jump into this and replace this. I'm going to show you guys how it's all done. First things first, what do we need to do when we're preparing for that? Well, we need to turn the power off to that unit. As with any electrical panel, when you turn a breaker off, you don't want to move it gingerly like a light switch on the wall. You want to give that thing a good slam off like that definitively turned off and when you turn it back on same thing slam it all the way to the on position if you move it slowly you can actually create an arc inside of that circuit breaker and you want to avoid that you want to avoid shorting it out and and shocking yourself at all costs how do you know which breaker it is that you're working with if they're not labeled as you can see on this breaker panel some of them are labeled and some of them aren't well in this case we had a partner stand out there by the dishwasher have the lights activated on it and we went ahead and flipped certain breakers until we got the right one now for all the diy warriors watching this video another tip for you anytime you're working on a project that involves the breaker panel and it's not labeled take that moment to label it if you've got your warrior house go bag you've got a roll of white 
electrical tape in there and a black fine point permanent marker, go ahead and label it now. If not, you can use a label maker or any other means to get some black text on some white labeling so it stands out. So we know that this bottom breaker is ours for the dishwasher. We're going to go ahead and label it, get the breaker turned off, and jump back over to the dishwasher. We're going to want to access the uh, underside of this dishwasher. Now there's going to be a panel down below. It's simply two set screws or even just plastic tabs and then you can just pop that out. And it'll just tip down and you can just remove that out of the way. So before pulling the dishwasher completely out, we're going to want to detach the dishwasher drain line. Some of you, it may be going into a garbage disposal like this, and some of you, it might actually just be going into a, a drain stack like that. You'll see a little angled T coming off of that. But what are we using to remove this? Well, guys, it's just a hose clamp. So we're just going to be using a 10 in one screwdriver. It's a great multi tool. If you have your warrior house go bag, there's a link down below. This comes with that. But we're going to be taking out the attachment for the Phillips and flathead right there. And the end of it is actually a nut driver that's going to fit perfectly onto that hose clamp. No sense in trying to fiddle with a flathead and getting it perfectly lined up. So we're just going to loosen up that hose clamp. We're going to see that it's going to break free then. We can slide that drain line right off the stem. Now you may have a little bit of water in there, so you want to be careful about that. Inspect your line at this time, make sure there's no cracks in it, things like that. Let's also turn off and disconnect the water supply line to the dishwasher. In most cases, this line is coming off of the hot water supply to your kitchen sink. All right, so now that we've disconnected the drain line, before we pull this out a little bit further, we're going to have to deal with the electrical line. Two tools that you're going to want for this are one, your 10 in one screwdriver and two, your electrical proximity tester. This tester is going to tell you if your power is in fact turned off. Now we know we turned the breaker off, but we still want to test it. So underneath the dishwasher here, there's a little electric panel and we're going to want to remove the plate from it right here. Simply by taking, in some cases, it's going to be a Phillips head. Sometimes it's a flat head. In my unit's case, it's going to be using a, the smaller version of the nut driver by taking out the Phillips and flat head screwdriver attachment. So I'll be able to unscrew that. It does also have a Phillips built into it. If I was to use that. Okay. We're going to use the nut driver to make it easier. We're going to remove the box altogether and the screw. Don't lose your parts. Let's get the proximity tester in there and we're going to place that near our wires. So we want to make sure that our power is in fact turned off. When disconnecting your wires from the dishwasher, you may have a pair of wires or three wires, including that copper ground wire coming through the back of the electrical box. Likely those are wire nutted together with uh, the black and the white wire. Simply untwist the wire nuts. You can recap them off with the wire nuts and push them through the back of the box. Or you might have a terminal block set up style like this, where you have three wires screwed into a block, unscrew the three wires, put wire nuts on them, and push them through the back of the box. And then the next thing that we're going to want to do is actually detach this dishwasher from either the countertop or the side cabinets, wherever it's secured. There's going to be these little tabs. I don't know if you guys have seen these before. But if you haven't, you might be even getting some new ones when you order replacement parts for your dishwasher. Sometimes they snap off, but there's a metal frame that goes along the sides of this basin right here, this wash basin right here. And these tabs are going to be slid in there. They're going to be screwed to either the underside of the countertop or the side of the cabinet. When you see those, you're going to want to remove the screws from that so then we can slide this unit out. So just working it out gingerly. You're going to hear your hose start to pull out of the back of your sink base there. And as long as you straightened it out and does not get caught on anything, it should come out pretty easily right there. All right, we're going to take a look around. Always good to have a towel on you in case any water starts to drip. You get a little bit of spill from the drain line here and there. All right, and so now we've got our electric out of the way. We know it's powered off. Go ahead and throw a wire nut on each one of those wires better to be safe than sorry. And then when it comes to dishwashers, all of them are made to be able to be tipped backwards onto the back of this basin, right? So again, might get some water coming out of the drain line as we tip this. We're gonna keep that over a towel the best that we can. And then we're just gonna run and roll this guy backwards. Just 
So now that we've got our dishwasher tipped down onto the back side, what we're looking for specifically at, towards the back end or the bottom, if you're looking at it on its side like this, of the dishwasher is going to be the, the two plastic nuts that actually hold this heat coil in place. Now I'm going to show you guys on the new one so you can kind of get a little bit better of an understanding. So here's our heat coil, right? You can see that rolling through the camera. And as it's going to be installed on the inside here, we're going to have these plastic nuts. You guys can see this in the video here, right? So you're going to have a plastic nut that holds that on. We're going to have this rubber grommet, this rubber washer that's going to create our waterproof seal. So we're going to go ahead and disconnect the existing one, which is simply just pulling the wires off. I recommend laying this up out of the way and then keeping a, an index of which side goes to which side. It's not always necessarily important, the polarity of it, but it's good to just good practice. And then we're going to use just a simple channel locks pliers to loosen these up. So we're going to get a little turn on there. Remember these are plastic, it doesn't take a lot to break it free. And then we're going to open the door and hold the inside portion of it to keep it from spinning. This is where if you have a helper, it's good to have them hold the inside and hold the door open. You can see the old one comes out and we've got this washer on there. Just like the new one has a new washer. This is the broken piece, right? So now we're going to get the other side off. You can see that. So now we're going to put the new one in. We're going to slide it in. And after we take our the brand new plastic nuts off of there, get rid of the old stuff so you don't get it confused. We're going to be conscious of one really important thing is that we still use the little metal tabs to hold this to hold this rail off the bottom of the plastic. I'll show you that after the installation since I've got it on its back now. There's a little bit of a bend, a little bit of flexibility in that heat coil. You don't want to stress it too much, but you're going to be, you are going to have to kind of flex it into place to line the holes up. So we got our new plastic nuts going on here. Make sure we're not cross-threading. Give them a, a reverse turn, quarter turn to start. Make sure they grab the threads right. Since it is plastic to metal, we don't want to cross-thread. Once we've got them hand snug, hand tight, as tight as you can get them by hand, you're going to want to finish them off with the pliers or channel locks. All right. They're all snug down. Let's bring our wires back down. They're just going to snap on into place. While you've got the unit upside down, it's always recommended give everything a quick inspection. Make sure that doesn't and nothing looks out of place. Make sure that nothing looks cracked or worn. You just save yourself like what four hundred to eight hundred dollars by not replacing your dishwasher by getting a $35 part on Amazon, right? So we might as well give everything else a good once over, make sure that we don't need to replace anything else while we're involved in this. So, all right, let's get the unit tip back up. We're gonna slide it back in. This is always a good time to take a look back in here and in this cubby and see if this needs to be vacuumed or cleaned out. In my case, All I'm doing is making sure that the drain line is pulled back into the cabinet here. All right? You're going to want to bring your electric line back in line with the underside of the dishwasher here. There's these side rails along the bottom of the dishwasher. For those who haven't done this before, your water line, your drain line, and your electric line are all going to come inside of those as you slide this back in. Again, really easy to slide. These are really lightweight. They're not heavy. And then you're just going to want to work your insulation down. If you have a pretty tight fit or a snug fit, you know, just get your insulation, your silencer. Your insulation helps with soundproofing, keeping this dishwasher nice and quiet so that you can run it at night. And Might need to get down on the floor, get a flashlight and uh, pull the electric line back through.
Now's the time where you can connect your water line. Get that thing done out of the way. That's a plastic, uh, metal to plastic fitting. So again, this is one of those ones where you really don't want to over tighten it. It's a compression fitting. So it doesn't take any tape, uh, doesn't take any TFE tape or pipe dope or anything like that. Good and snug. Make sure our drain line came back nice and free. Yeah, no issues there. We'll get that connected back in a moment. And then we're gonna go ahead and get our electric tied back in here. Anytime you're working with electric, if you have the opportunity to put a clean cut and a clean wire strip on there, grab your wire stripper pliers and do so. All right, once you get your electric wire knotted back together, you're gonna to wanna to get the electric panel cover back on there. And again, we're gonna use that 10 in one screwdriver. All right, so we've got our electric hooked back up. Our water line is hooked back up. We're gonna slide this back into place. Just about right there. You can adjust your levelers to make sure that you're level on that. Let's connect the drain line, reattach our mounting tabs, get the water turned back on and give it a test. So we're, when reattaching this drain line, you just wanna tighten back down. Again, we're using our 10 in one screwdriver, turning it into a nut driver. So just tighten back down that hose clamp, make sure that it's snug. You can feel that the, the rubber's been compressed on both sides. So our drain line is intact, our power is reconnected, our water's turned back on, we've established we have no leaks, right. and we've re-secured to the underside of our countertop, our mounting brackets in there, got our tray put back in. Let's get a close up really quickly on this coil in here. You can see the heat coil that we just installed, right? We've got our rubber grommets at the back end of there on both sides that have been compressed down as we tighten down. And the metal tabs, really important that we wanna make sure that we use those to lift that heat coil off the bottom of the plastic base in there. Now we wanna run some tests to make sure that everything is working properly. There's one easy way to do that, which is to simply turn the unit on, make sure that your heated wash cycle and heated dry cycle are on. And after a few minutes, you should be able to feel some heat and steam coming out of the vent over here. And then later on when it's drying, you should be able to see dry dishes coming out. Another way to ensure that everything is done properly is, is to actually do a reset on the panel that's in here. I know it sounds super complicated, but it's actually really not that hard to do. On this particular model that I have, I have the button here. It's one button for heat, normal, and one hour wash, and then heat dry, high temp, and then four hour delay is another button. Those are command buttons right there. So step one, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that the door is closed and the unit's in standby, which means that it's latched. It's not partially open a little bit like that, right? Get that click going. Step two, we're gonna to want to take any three of these buttons. In my case, I only have three command buttons and we're gonna to want to hit them in sequence about three times and we'll know when we've hit it when these lights start blinking. So we're gonna go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And now all of the lights have lit up on the board here. The machine is gonna run its own diagnostics and it's going to run through this whole cycle and the clean button is blinking. That's the other way you know that this cycle is taking place right now, that the clean button will start to blink. And this is where you just let it wait for a couple minutes. Once this is done, the unit's gonna actually start its own automated test cycle. So I went ahead and threw some dishwasher detergent in there and some dishes, let this thing run its course. You could do the same thing or run it empty if you want to. If you have other units with more buttons on there, you might be looking at a high temp wash feature button and an air dry button. If you have those, you're gonna be pressing those two, high temp, and air dry in sequence about 10 times. Or you might have sandy rinse and air dry. Those are two different buttons on some of the Whirlpool models. And there's a lot of other models out there that are going to have similar command 
features. What I suggest you do with whatever dishwasher you're replacing the heat coil on is just a quick Google search on how to reset the computer programming board that's in here. With Whirlpool, Maytag, GE, a lot of the similar manufacturers using the similar components, it's gonna be really easy to do. But guys, as you can see, that this unit is already firing off its automated test cycle, and I am confident that it's going to run absolutely perfectly. Guys, we just saved ourselves about 700 bucks from buying a new dishwasher, or how much does it cost to get a service technician out to replace this yourself? You just did it for a $35 part that you got on Amazon. Again, I'll throw a link down below for the part that I used. It's a widely used part across a lot of model numbers. You're gonna wanna obviously cross check yours. But until the next video, again, I'm JR with Warrior House DIY, empowering you with the skills for life. Please make sure to give us a like, subscribe, and share this video with anybody else you know who may gain some value from it. Thanks for watching. See you at the next video.